Hi guys, Jeffrey here. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about positive masculinity and how you can nurture it and build it within yourself. And this is crucial, especially if you're trying to salvage your relationship or save your relationship, or if you want to have a, the best relationship you can possibly have. Because this aspect of uh, positive masculinity is something that people misunderstand a lot. And when people misunderstand it, they end up displaying toxic masculinity as we'll talk about later. And this will affect how you communicate, this will affect attraction, and so this will affect many, many different areas of your life. And usually it's not until my students really grasp this concept of what it means to uh, display positive masculinity in a way that allows you to be a leader in a positive way that they're able to make massive changes in their relationship. So be sure to stick around to the very end of this video because I really want this video to be the one-stop shop for you to understanding everything you need to know about positive masculinity. And for those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Jeffrey and I help men in long-term relationships or in marriages with the right skills, with the right mindsets to be able to design a thriving relationship for yourself. So if you want more content on this topic, be sure to subscribe to this channel and also click that bell button as well to be notified when I post new videos every single week. And before we begin this video, I also want to let you know that the free masterclass on the five proven steps to rebuilding your relationship from the ground up is still open. So if you want to join me in that masterclass or if you want to apply for the Relationship Survival Program, which is my paid program, then be sure to stick around to the very end of this video for the announcement on how you can join that masterclass. Now, before we talk about how to build positive masculinity, let's first talk about some basics of what it means to be masculine in the first place. So the first myth that I think a lot of people subconsciously have is an understanding that masculine or femininity is more of a mutually exclusive thing, that you're either masculine or feminine. So usually we picture it in a spectrum like this, where one pole represents masculine, the other pole represents feminine. And if we are in this white circle here, towards the masculine side, then the more masculine we are, the less feminine we are. And vice versa, if you are identify yourself as more feminine, then the more feminine you are, the less masculine you are. And if you're talking about being balanced in terms of being masculine and feminine balanced, then that means that you are neither, right? You are not masculine or not feminine either. But this is actually not a very accurate way of looking at masculine and feminine. The more accurate way of looking at this is looking at this as a mutually inclusive thing rather than exclusive is more of a mutually inclusive thing where they can both coexist together. So the way you can picture this is that on the one hand, yes, you can definitely have a high sense of masculinity and a low femininity, or you can have the reverse, which is high femininity or um, low masculinity. But you can also have a combination where you have high of both masculine and feminine, or you can have low of both. So these two are really uh, two, I guess you can say measures, two different things that can either grow together or lessen together, but they're not necessarily a trade-off to each other. Now you might be asking, how is this possible in a real life setting? And to understand that, we need to also understand something that's called the masculine and feminine potentials versus masculine and feminine manifestations. So potentials versus manifestations. So just to define some things here, when we show you this bar, we're talking really about the masculine or feminine potential. And when we show you this little uh, bars, we're really showing you the manifestations of it. So in this graphic here, you can see here that this person has both a very high masculine and very high also feminine potentials. Now, that doesn't mean though that you are both masculine and feminine when you're actually manifesting it in real life. So let's say here that you're at work, right? When you're at work, you tend to be more masculine at work. You tend to be go-getting, you tend to be overcoming obstacles, uh, getting to solutions, being assertive, etc. So you are manifesting more of your masculine side and manifesting less of your feminine side. But the potentials really doesn't change. The potential is always there. Now, let's say you get home and you're talking to your children and your children are crying because they had a bad day in school. You might need to animate more of your feminine side, feminine mode here, where you have to be more compassionate more understanding, slow down time a bit. You're not trying to solve the problem, you're just trying to listen and be there for your children. So here you're trying to manifest more of your feminine side and lessen the manifestation of your masculine side. But again, the potentials don't change. Now, so here, the potentials are very different than the manifestations of it. The manifestations, yes, are mutually exclusive to where you have to pick either masculine or feminine, but the potentials, you can have both be very high. Now the thing to note here is that it's important for people to understand the importance of having very high both masculine and feminine potentials. Because in this case, having high both masculine and feminine potentials allows you to 
just switch around to whatever uh, masculine and feminine combination that you want to manifest for a particular time, for a particular moment. Because you can imagine here, let's say that you are someone who have really grown your masculine potential, but you haven't really grown your feminine potential yet. So you can be really masculine, but you can't really be feminine. Now, in the context of work, for example, if you go to work, then you would be having no problems whatsoever. But the problem is when you come home, for example, because you haven't really grown your feminine potential, when the circumstance requires you to be more feminine, to be more compassionate, to slow down, etc., you will struggle to animate, to manifest that part of you. And this is where I think, you know, if you talk to a lot of men, for example, one of the biggest issues they have is when they come home from work, for example, they're still the controlling, they're still the dominant side, when they actually need to be more slowing down, more compassionate. And so they're animating and they're manifesting the wrong mode at the wrong time. And I think if you're, a lot of men are watching this, you can relate to this as well, where you can't usually switch off from work, you can't really switch off from that work mode, and you carry work home with you, the work personality, the harsh personality with you home. And that creates a lot of havoc in the relationship as well. This usually happens because you haven't really grown your feminine potential here. Your potentials are very imbalanced. Now, the one question I think a lot of you might have at this point is, Jeff, you're saying that men also need to be feminine. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by growing your feminine potential? And I think we need to take some time here to also understand some definitions and differences between what it means to be masculine or what it means to be feminine. So just understand here, when we talk about masculinity or femininity, we need to uh, extract it away from this concept of a gender. It doesn't mean that you dress a certain way or you're macho or you're feminine, you're more dainty, whatever it is. It has nothing to do with that. This is more of a mode, a mode of thinking, a mode of operation that you operate with. So for example, there's a lot of definitions of what it means to be masculine in the web from other videos and so on, but the most useful way we've found to define masculinity is really in this way. The masculine mode, the masculine side of you wants to get from this situation to a desired destination and is willing to go through any obstacles that come between you and your destination. Now, if you look at the traits that are usually associated with being masculine, things like grit, things like strength, things like uh, assertiveness, all these positive traits are designed, if you think about it, for the masculine to jump over the obstacles, to bust through the obstacles to get to the destination. But we can also see how because the masculine is really about getting to a destination, we can also see how a lot of the toxic traits that the masculine could have, like being dominating, being too controlling, being abusive even, can come up. Because let's say that you're trying to get from point A to point B, and there's a massive obstacle here. When you get that obstacle, that obstacle will annoy you, will frustrate you, will will drive you crazy. And that's where the abusiveness, the desire for control comes in. And so you can also see how this model really fits why the masculine are associated with the uh, positive traits that are usually associated with, or also the negative traits as well. Now let's look at the other side, the feminine side. So the feminine side is not really interested in going from point A to point B, but it's more interested in staying in the current moment. Specifically, it does two things. The feminine side is really about either taking in the beauty of the moment on the right side here or about uh, expressing beauty in the moment. And so again here, you can see how a lot of the feminine traits, the positive traits of the feminine can be represented by this model as well. So for example, when we think about the positive traits of being feminine, we're talking about being expressive, being radiating beauty, radiance, stuff like that. That is simply the feminine trying to radiate the beauty outwards, like on the left side here. But we can also, associate the feminine side with taking in the beauty, taking in the moment, going with the flow, etc. This is when the feminine side is taking in the beauty. Now, we can also see how this uh, leads the feminine side to be associated with some toxic traits as well, like not being go-getting, like being wishy-washy, not being decisive, etc. So again, this model of seeing how what masculine and feminine is fits our existing archetypes. And if you understand the previous definition, we also need to understand here that Neither the masculine or the feminine are good or bad or better or worse. They're just different. There's some moments in life that requires you to be more masculine, like when you're at work, when you're trying to complete a project, doing finances, um, trying to solve a problem. You do need to animate more of your masculine side because here you're trying to go from point A to point B and bust through any obstacles that you face potentially. But some moments also require you to be more feminine, like when you're talking to your children or when listening to your partner, when you're having a relaxing time, you do need to be more feminine 
in those times because this is all about listening, understanding, being compassionate, making people feel understood, etc. And masculinity or femininity only becomes toxic when you're displaying the wrong mode at the wrong time. So if you are being masculine when you need to be feminine, that's when masculinity becomes toxic. And also when you're feminine, when you need to be masculine, that becomes toxic as well. And the other way to see that, you know, both the masculine and feminine, it's not better or worse, is by using the analogy of looking at primary colors, for example. So for example, you know that the primary colors here are red, blue, and green. How weird would it be for you to say, I think red is better than green. I mean, it would be pretty weird because you know that all these three colors are required to create the full spectrum of colors. And if you take out just one of the colors here, you are very handicapped in the array of colors that you can form. Well, it's kind of the same thing with masculine and feminine. Neither one is better, but they each have their own pros and cons. And they're both important for use in different purposes. So let's dive deeper here then into what does it mean when we say someone's displaying toxic masculinity? It's really two things. One is when someone doesn't really understand that M and F is really mutually inclusive and they see it as mutually exclusive. So whenever I tell someone, for example, oh, you need to be more connected with your feminine side, a lot of men get really offended by that because they don't understand the definitions of what masculine and feminine is. And they think that I'm trying to ask them to dress like more like a girl or talk more like a girl. That's not what I'm saying at all. And this is also when they mistake MNF potentials with manifestations as well. And so that leads them to really pick one side over the other. And so when you pick one side or the other, you usually go into one or two places. You are either um, all masculine and no feminine. So again, your masculine potential is very large, but your feminine potential is very low. And as we talked about, this will create havoc in a lot of parts of your life when you do need to be more feminine. And that's when your masculinity becomes quite toxic, when you display a very strong masculinity in the wrong times. But also when you're also fully masculine and you have a very high masculine potential, but low feminine potential, usually that low feminine potential is caused by you judging or you uh, scoffing, you disrespecting what it means to be feminine. So there's a lot of men, for example, who they look at all their uh, partner's feminine behavior, like taking too long to put on makeup, being indecisive. They kind of roll their eyes at it. They judge it. They don't like it. And that's when it gets pretty toxic too, when you start to judge, when you start to scoff, when you start to suppress the feminine side that you have rejected. And the same thing goes when you have rejected your masculine side. You know, there's a lot of women out there, for example, who look at very masculine men and they scoff and they, and they think that any form of masculinity is very, very toxic. These are people who have very high feminine potentials, but very low masculine potentials because they've really suppressed and judged that potential in themselves, but also in other people as well. There's a third category of people here who are just really confused about what masculinity or femininity really means. So, and so one day they can be very masculine. Then they realize that all masculine becomes quite toxic. The society and the world tells them to stop being so masculine. They become more feminine, but that's, they realize that that's not good too. And they keep switching back and forth, never really knowing what their identity is. So they feel very insecure. And this insecurity can manifest itself in many different forms of other ways of being toxic, being needy. You know, just like how whenever you're insecure about anything, you tend to have defense mechanisms around it. So when you have positive masculinity though, all that means is that you have balanced MNF potentials. You accept both your masculine side, but also you accept the feminine side as well. And only that, you're also able to manifest and showcase the right masculinity, the right levels of masculinity and the right levels of femininity at the right times, at the right moments, depending on what the situation requires of you as well. And only that, they appreciate the spectrum of both M and F scales. So just like how we appreciate all three colors RGB, we need to appreciate both sides, both masculine and feminine, and understand that they both their own pros and their cons, and none of them are really better than the other. It's just that, we need to be able to display the right ones at the right time. And number four, people with positive masculinity also are very secure in their MNF definitions on what MNF actually means, but also secure in their place with it. So they're secure in that they understand that they have high potentials in both because they haven't rejected any of them, but also they're also secure in the ways they manifest each one, depending on whatever circumstances they find themselves in. Now, when we better understand these definitions behind what it means to be masculine or feminine, then we can also talk about how to grow it as well. So the first thing we need to do, and we're not gonna to go too deep here because this video is getting a bit long already, but 
The first thing you need to do is really to stop judging the opposite. So if you are someone who tends to look at your partner, your feminine partner, for example, and you look at their expressiveness sometimes, they're, they're, maybe they talk too much, maybe they're too emotional, maybe their decisions swing from day to day too much. You know, all the negative sides of the feminine. If you're someone who is used to judging those things and criticizing those things, you need to stop that. Because this is what's gonna cause your feminine potential to really drastically go down. Because here, you're not really understanding that the things that you hate about the feminine side are also rooted in the same things that you like about the feminine side. So the same way, the things that makes you sometimes emotional, sometimes angry, sometimes um, a bit too controlling, are the same sides of you that makes you go-getting, that makes you push, that makes you persevere on the masculine side. So what's funny is that when you keep judging all these uh, negative sides of the feminine side, you will also kill the whole feminine side in general. So you'll also kill the good sides. And so the first thing to do is to stop judging the bad sides of the feminine side. The second step is to consciously explore the opposites. Again, masculine and feminine is just pros and cons. They're both just pros and cons. The things that lead you to do the toxic stuff in your masculinity are also rooted in the same masculinity as the stuff that leads you to do the good things of masculinity. The same thing for femininity. So a good exercise that I have a lot of my clients do is that take whatever you don't like about your partner. Let's say you criticize her emotionality, her indecisiveness, whatever it is that you criticize. Now ask yourself this question. That thing that I criticize is rooted in femininity. But if it's rooted in femininity, what aspects of her feminine side do I actually like? And you might find here that you like that she, the fact that she's radiant. You like the fact that she's expressive. You like the fact that she's going with the flow. She's not rigid like you are. Now, once you understand that, you realize that, hmm, the bad side of the feminine side is really the same, rooted in the same things as the positive side. And if I kill the negative side, I'll also kill the positive side. And I want you to start seeing objectively the pros and cons of your own masculinity but also of the pros and cons of your partner's femininity as well. So here, basically, I want you to start choosing to see not only just the negatives, but also the positives of both sides, of the masculine and also the feminine side as well. And when you are more accepting of them, you will start to grow the potential within yourself as well. So for example, for me, it was the moment when I started to really appreciate my partner's feminine side and her ability to listen, be compassionate. You know, sometimes I would watch her talk to her friends and her friends are being really toxic, her friends are complaining to her and, and just whining to her for hours and hours, but yet she stays there and she listens to them. And I used to scoff at this. I used to scoff at this, I used to make fun of this. And I would tell her, for example, you know, if I was me, I would be telling my partner to like get their shit together. So here I am looking at my masculine potential and looking at her feminine potential and saying, eh, the feminine side is really bad. But I realized that my judgment of her listening to her friends also showcased my inability to listen to my clients, to my friends, to my partner. And that's what caused a lot of havoc in our relationship as well. So even if I wanted to be there for my friends, to listen to them, to listen to my partner, I couldn't do it because I cannot do something that I have judged, that I have rejected. The more you judge the other side, the more you suppress that potential on the other side. And the more you suppress that potential, the more you will struggle in many areas of life. But once you stop judging and you start accepting and you see the pros and cons objectively, you will naturally find that this ability for you to also manifest your feminine side also grows along with it. Now, the other thing that happens too, funny enough, is that when we have rejected one side of ourselves, so let's say we rejected the feminine side, we also tend to judge our partners for it. So we scoff, we criticize our partners whenever my partner, for example, is listening to other people. And so when we judge the feminine side, we also kill our partner's feminine potential as well. We suppress that. And it makes it harder for our partner to be balanced as well. And so judging either side will wreak a lot of havoc in so many ways in the relationship, as you can see here. But once you stop judging, you will not only help yourself, but you also help your partner as well become more balanced, both of you. And the fifth thing here is once you raise your potentials, I want you to be more aware and conscious about switching the modes. So the beautiful skill that a lot of our clients have learned is the ability to switch modes in a micro level. 
So they can even switch modes in the context of one conversation. So let's say you're having a conversation with your partner or maybe in a business meeting. You know, in this conversation, a good leader starts by listening, being compassionate, understanding. And so there, in that part of the conversation, you are manifesting more of your feminine side. But as soon as you understand something and you're ready to make a solution or propose a solution, you might switch to your masculine side. And so it just, this almost becomes like water where you are free to manifest whatever sides you want, however much you want, because you have that full potential at your disposal. And when you have maximized your potentials, both potentials, and when you understand how to fluidly move between the two throughout your day, that is when you can really show positive masculinity. And that is what positive masculinity is all about. And when you can do that, you will find that it will be easier for you to be more present, to be more effective in dealing with different moments in your relationship, in your work, in your life, etc. You will also find that you can build polarity or sexual polarity. So if you watch a lot of videos on attraction, you will know that sexual polarity is really the polarization between masculine and feminine. That when you do this, when you allow both your potentials to grow and allow both of you to manifest both sides easily, then that's how you create polarity in a very effortless sense. That's how you also avoid any insecure or any toxic manifestations of your masculine side or your feminine side because you're not showing the wrong mode at the wrong time. It creates radical trust and safety because then you're effective, you are showing the right mode at the right time. And also the relationship in yourself becomes more of a complete symphony. Again, it's going back to that color example where you're not handicapped because you don't have one primary color, but you have all three primary colors that allows you to form a full spectrum of every experience in life, really. And so this, understanding this has really a lot of benefits, as you can see. And if you're curious about how this actually helps you save your relationship, I want you to watch a lot of the client reviews that I have that I'm going to post at the end of this video, but also below this video as well. And I want you to watch those client reviews because once you see those client reviews, you will see their, this balance in action and the importance of this balance and how this balance allows them to not only communicate better, create safety, and eventually reconcile and create a better relationship than they've ever dreamed of. So if you want to understand more of this process and more processes like this to allow you to create a very complete relationship and for you to form a complete understanding about relationships, about self-development, then I want you to join me in my free masterclass on the five proven steps to rebuilding your relationship from the ground up. In that masterclass, I'll show you the exact same steps I show all my students to allow them to uh, reconcile and save their marriage despite being in very hopeless situations. And so if you want to join the masterclass or if you want to uh, submit your application for the Relationships Revival program, you can do so by clicking at the link above my head or also the link down below this video as well. And if you're looking for a free guide that can help you uh, guide conversations better in a way that is balanced in this, both the masculine and feminine side, then you can also download the guide I have for you above my head also down below this video. And finally, if you're looking for a community where you can ask your questions and have a member of my team respond to you, then you can also join me in my free Facebook group as well. And the link to that is down below this video. In the meantime, I know this was a very complex video, but if you have any questions on this, feel free to leave a comment below. I would love to hear from you. And if you found this video eye-opening or helpful, then click like, it really helps the channel out and also subscribe to this channel for more content like this one. In the meantime, I will leave you with these two other videos here with more skills, with more knowledge to allow you to design a thriving relationship for yourself. For now, I will see you in the next video.